wardrobe for the Bass Tour Anglers podcast is provided by Koppel Outfitters. Go have an adventure. Visit them online at www.koppeloutfitters.com and on social media at Koppel Outfitters. This segment of the Bass Tour Anglers podcast is brought to you in part by Top Tier Tackle. With over 30 years of experience in the rod building industry, look for Top Tier's XT, Affinity, and Valor series this fall, wherever fine tackle is sold. Hello everybody, welcome to the Winner's Circle. Our guest today has 23 top 10 finishes in a career of bass fishing tournaments. He's got four big tournament wins, two Forest Cup Wood appearances, he's a Bassmaster Classic qualifier, and he's the winner of the 2020 Juan Bass US Open on Lake Mead. Tim Klinger, welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you, thank you. Uh, for those who don't know, the U.S. Open is an annual event put on by Western Outdoor News. It's, it's always in the fall these days. It's always on Lake Mead, which if you've never fished Lake Mead, then, then you really just don't know because tough doesn't really explain Lake Mead, at least in a tournament situation. Um, complicated might be a better word, but it, either way, it is one of the most difficult fishing situations to be in, that U.S. Open. Uh, what is it about Lake Mead, Tim? What, why is it such a tough tournament lake? Well, you know, the, the water is always fluctuating on Lake Mead. You know, it could be up in the spring, maybe 15 foot. And then when it comes to the fall, it always starts falling. Well, it starts falling in the early spring. But uh, yeah, it's always changing. The, the water level, that's a huge deal. You know, probably the biggest impact is the water level. How much cover is available to fish, you know? You know, uh, a lot of the pros we talk to fish on lakes that are influenced by a lot of water movement. Is Mead a lake? Because I mean, I know they pull water all the time, that whole chain of lakes, but is Mead a lake that is influenced by, by river current? You know, not, not so much. I mean, if you're fishing up on the upper end of the lake, up in Greg's Basin, yeah, that, that, that current can play a part in catching some of those fish up there. But you know, once you're down mid lake, you, you don't, you don't notice that. The only current you're going to see then would be wind current. And, and that could help sometimes too. You know, my experience with Lake Mead is that it, it tends to be a lake that you have to be good at a lot of different things because what worked yesterday is probably not going to work tomorrow. And, and it, it, it just around every corner is a different kind of cover or structure. Uh, is that a, is that a good analogy? Yeah, it really is. You know, a lot of guys always seem to to go into that tournament with an with an idea of fishing three different areas of the lake each each day. You know, and like for me, sometimes it, I may fish two or three areas in one day. You know, burn fifty gallons of fuel, and that's what it takes sometimes to catch a decent limit there. Over the years, a lot of bass pros um, from the western part of the country have kind of relocated to that uh to that lake mead area boulder city area i think of john murray for a while there and people like that because of the tournaments that were on me they're always the big they were always big tournaments um have you always lived there or did you relocate to, to the vegas area or how did that work out no I was, I was born and raised here so yeah lake mead's my home lake and then lake mojave so yeah yeah born and raised okay so so this lake has kind of been on your how, how many times have you fished this tournament uh, I don't know. I think 20, around 20, I guess. And uh, I've had some really good finishes before. You know, I've been leading the tournament going into the last day and never had a bite on the final day. That was a, that was a heartbreaker. But yeah, it's, uh, it's all Lake Mead, U.S. Open, always on my mind. It's always on every West Coast angler's mind, you know. It, it, it sure is. I mean, every time I see it, I haven't fished it. I haven't fished that tournament for uh, probably over 10 years, but I, I, I know back in the day when I, was, when I was doing it, that was the thing that you wanted to make sure you were, you were at that event because it's, it's, it's the event. It's the event in the Western United States. You've won some big tournaments in your career. FLW Walmart Open on Beaver Lake in 2004, an FLW Tour event at Clear Lake, a Toyota Series event at Lake Mead, 
Where does the where does the U.S. Open rank for you all time? Uh, honestly, it's at the top of the list. It really is. And maybe that's because I fished it so many times and it's right here in my backyard, but it, it really is at the top of the list. But it's, it's funny you would say that, uh, maybe being a local, you would say that, but I know guys, even Rick Clun will say that, and he's, he's won it quite a few times himself, but that's always an event he talks about as being just, just one of those events that, uh, you know, if you can survive Mead and, and, and do well, then you've really done something. Um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the smallmouth population has really helped Mead in the last 10 years. Do, do you specifically target smallmouth when you go to Mead, or does it just kind of happen? Do they just kind of show up? I don't typically chase them. I mean, because that's, that's what it usually ends up being, is you're chasing them smallmouth. You know, you may catch them good one day, but that next day to get on those same fish is very hard to do. But uh, I just... If I catch them, I catch them. If I don't, I'm I'm fishing for largemouth almost always, exclusively. You know, maybe maybe in the late spring, I'll we'll target them a little bit more. But around the U.S. Open time, no. I just if I catch one, wow, it was kind of lucky, I guess. Well, I, I mean, a lot of these lakes in this country, uh, pros have a choice. They can decide to go and target a large a largemouth population, or they'll go and target a smallmouth population. But really. It, it mean it, it's uh, if you find some living fish that are active and willing to eat, you, you catch whatever bites, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Cause you never know, you know, you could be catching two pound uh, large mouth and all of a sudden catch that three pound small mouth in the mix with them, you know? So yeah, it's uh, Lake Mead's really cool nowadays compared to when it would just have large mouth, you know? I mean, there's really a lot of small mouth in that place and it's kind of, kind of saved it since the lakes dropped drop so low you know so yeah the smallmouth fishing's it's pretty good but i, I typically don't chase them you know because I, I may catch them really good one day and then the next day i like i say i might not find them fish again yeah you, you know i, I it, in, it intrigues me i know i've been I, I know i'm asking a lot of smallmouth questions here but but it really intrigues me about lake mead someone that fishes it as often as you do do you notice that they tend to be on a certain kind of cover more than 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 other types of cover or is it just completely random? No, I think it's pretty random. I mean, over the last 10 years of fishing for them, you know, it's funny that they really, I used to think that it was just a couple different types of structure they really like to be on. And it's not, it's not the case at all. And I thought it was area, you know, I thought certain areas were way better for them, but it's not, I've caught them all over the lake and, you could catch a three and a half, four pounder just about anywhere on the lake. It's pretty amazing. Are you looking for a bass rod that won't break your bank? Introducing the XT series from Top Tier Tackle. Proprietary carbon nano blank, grade A full cork handle and foregrip, top performance stainless steel, tangle free guides, lightweight and durable, and a one year limited warranty. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Top Tier Tackle LLC. Visit their website at www.t3rods.com. We're talking to Tim Klingler. He is the winner of the 2020 U.S. Open, the Juan Bass U.S. Open. Uh, it's, it's, it's the jewel of the West if you uh, know much about Western bass fishing. Um, you've been close before in the U.S. Open, and we already talked about that a couple times. Um, what has past experiences taught you? and maybe helped you get over the hump for this year? Well, this year was, uh, this year was gonna be different. You know, we had the whole COVID thing going on. And so I did, uh, I did some practicing in the spring on Lake Mead and, and I went for six months, six months without being on the lake prior to the US Open. And I practiced two days. And the, one of the reasons I did that the last, two or three years I've had terrible tournaments where I practiced three or four days and just didn't do any good in the open, made bad decisions and whatnot. But I practiced two days and I caught them really good. The first day of practice, I'm really, really good. And I had three areas that I decided I was going to fish. And I just, after the first day of the tournament, I uh, decided on one area and, and that's what I stuck to. So coming into the pre-fish period for this year's U.S. Open, uh, just 
tell us about your mindset. I mean, what, what were your expectations before practice started, going into that first day of practice? What were your expectations for the leg? How much pounds did you think it was going to take? Uh, I mean, it, it mead is pretty much you got to catch a limit every day to have a chance. But what kind of weight did you think you needed? And what mood did you think these fish would be in? It's a, it was, it's in, in the fall in October. Um, tough conditions, most parts of the country, really tough on Lake Mead. So what were your thoughts coming into practice? So uh, my thoughts, you know, I mean, after all the years of fishing it, you know, once in a while we'll have really good years where, where some guys will catch 13 a day to win or even a little bit better. But I just kind of figured, you know, I watched the weather, I watched the lake drop all summer long and, and I, uh, I figured it would be somewhere between 10 and 13 pounds, you know, a day to catch, to win the tournament. And uh, so once I started practicing, I mean, that's kind of, you know, my goal was to catch 10 pounds a day, you know, or, or better, you know. Um, any particular patterns that come to play or is it, is it the same, same kind of arsenal all year round in me? Do you mean, I mean, uh, is there something particularly in the fall that you would go to as opposed to say the summer or the spring? So th this year was a little bit different, but w there was still a lot of grass out there and a lot of, a lot of bait up shallow. And so when I, when I started out practicing, that's what I did. I was targeting grass shallow with spinner bait, buzz bait, you know, top water. And, and I caught a few nice ones doing that. But once you got 250 boats out there, all them real shallow fish, you know, they get tight lipped pretty quick. I still caught some in the tournament real shallow, you know, in two or three foot of water, but I ended up moving out deeper and I kind of had an idea that I would have to do that before the tournament started, you know, just there's going to be too many people fishing up in that real shallow grass. So I had a, I had a backup plan of fishing out a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper on deeper rock piles and on, uh, on some brush, some old tree lines. That is probably why the U S open fish is so tough. It's because you just mentioned 250 boats on a lake is going to make things tough. <laughs> Yeah, it really is. And, and it doesn't matter what lake it is. You know, I mean, you get 250 boats out there practicing for a week straight, you know, they're, they're catching a lot of fish all week long. And those fish, you know, they don't tend to bite real soon after they've been caught. Tired of the same old, same old? Check out the new Affinity Rod Series from Top Tier Tackle. Soft touch, EVA, split grip, custom 30 ton nano blank, C-grade real seat, top performance stainless steel, tangle-free guides, ultra lightweight, superior impact and fracture resistant, and a limited three-year warranty. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram at Top Tier Tackle, LLC. Visit their website at www.t3rods.com. We're talking to Tim Klingler. He is the winner of the 2021 Bass U.S. Open at Lake Mead. Tim, day one... You did what you had to do at Lake Mead. You caught that five fish limit, but it wasn't a very good limit. It was about seven pounds. But actually, you know, at Mead, any limit is a good limit. But, you know, when you're talking about needing 10 to 13 pounds, seven pounds isn't really what you want. Um, talk about how important it was to get those five fish, though, on that first day. Yeah, you know, that's always the case on Lake Mead. It doesn't matter if it's a spring tournament or, or a fall tournament, summer tournament. If it's a multi day tournament you better catch your five fish you know that's uh, cost guys over the years every time bringing in four fish you know so five fish limits huge even though it wasn't a, a you know it was I think seven and three quarter pounds I was in 42nd place but I had you know I had I was still in that you know I was still in it you know if I would only come up with five pounds yeah it would have been uh terrible you know but uh Having almost eight pounds gave me the confidence, you know, to, to really, I fished two areas that day. I fished one area and only caught a couple of fish. And then I switched late in the day. And I, I think I caught three or four fish in this other area. And that's kind of what made up my mind for the next day. And when I went back there the next day, it was, the fishing was better. The fish were bigger. And, but I had a lot more time fishing there too. You know, I spent the whole, the whole day in that one area. If you don't mind talking about the baits, what were the key baits for you on, on day one? 
Um, I caught, I think, one or two on uh, my TK1 spinnerbait, and then I caught uh, several on a, a seven inch power worm, you know, just a Texas rig power worm. And I don't think any topwater fish that first day. Yeah, spinnerbait and the worm was, was pretty much the deal. Okay, so day two comes along and you, like you, as you mentioned, you had, a, you had 13 and a half pounds on day two. Um, was it an adjustment? Was it just fishing that area longer, slower maybe? What was, what was the difference on day two? I, I don't know for sure what made the real big difference. I, I used pretty much the same baits again. I did, however, switch up to a little heavier weight to get a faster fall. And maybe that helped trigger a couple of the bigger bites. But I think just fish in the area that had the bigger fish was the key on the second day. You know, I, I fished a few places for, for a long time and, you know, just soaked my bait down there and got lucky and got the right bites. So these were deeper fish. Okay. Um, all right. Yeah, I think, I think on that day two when you came in with that big bag, uh, that's big bag of the, that's big bag of the tournament, wasn't it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I, think, I think everybody said, uh-oh, here comes Tim. Uh, Tim, you know, obviously Tim is in this tournament every year. Obviously Tim knows this lake. And when he, when he came in with 13 and a half pounds, that was, kind of a, that was kind of an announcement to watch out for everybody else. Well, day three, you sealed the win with another double-digit bag. I mean, almost 11 pounds. Um, did you fish the same area or did you move around? What did you do? No, I went back to the same area. It was, uh, it was tougher on the third day. Um, I don't know why it was a little bit tougher that particular day. I, we, we didn't have near, there was like no breeze at all on the third day. Maybe that played a little bit into how the fish bit. But yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> We had the only 10 pound plus bag. It was, it was awesome. My partner on the uh, third day, he, uh, he caught a real nice one, almost a four pounder. And that, that helped a ton, you know, that was awesome. For, for people that don't know, uh, your day two weight, 13.5 at Lake Mead, that's like a 30 pound bag at, at Lake Fork, just so we can put it in perspective, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> that's like a 30 pound bag at clear lake or, or somewhere like that you get 13 and a half pounds on lake mead on the day you you've uh, you've done something special um well tim you've had a, a long career in this sport uh you've done well in some of the other organizations what uh what will be the, your future are you gonna jump back back into the full-time tour or are you uh just gonna stick around locally what do you what do you plan what are your plans for the future um, I think probably just stick around local. Uh, you know, I got a little boy that's seven years old and a daughter that's eight years old. So I need to be at home right now, but I, you know, maybe in 10 and 11 years, I might get back after it, but yeah, I'll probably fish all the one bass tournaments this year and, and, uh, some team tournaments. I always like fishing team tournaments with a couple of my friends, you know, but, uh, I'll fish all the one bass stuff and, Maybe throw in some other tournaments as well. We'll see. You know, well, we, while we have you here, let's talk about Lake Mead's neighbor, Lake Mojave. That lake has come back with a vengeance in recent, recent years, hasn't it? Yeah, it sure has. Uh, we, we fished a Bass Nation team championship there last weekend, me and my partner. We won. We had uh, 1994, all smallmouth. Uh, he had big fish of the tournament was a 589 smallmouth and I had about a five and a half smallmouth. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, that fishery is incredible. I wish there would be a few more big tournaments that are held there, but it just, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, you know, so it's mainly just like team tournaments that show up there. Searchlight's not in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, back in the day, we used to have some Red Man tournaments that would yeah. go out of uh, Catherine's Landing, and that was That's always right. fun. But yeah, that lake's phenomenal. It's it's choked full of smallmouth and big smallmouth. I think last year we seen uh, a, like a 738 weighed in or something. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. But yeah, multiple, uh, I've weighed in multiple 22-pound bags of smallmouth there. It's a lot of fun. 
That that's that is some good that's some good some good weight. So for you, do you like the searchlight area or do you like the Catherine's area there at uh, at at Mojave? I you know I mean that's probably my favorite lake on the Colorado River, and I like the whole thing. I mean, there's a lot of times I launch at uh, Willow Beach a lot of times because it's only half an hour from my house. Oh yeah, Willow Beach, yeah. Yeah, fish so has, fish if it's not. Yeah, if it's not a windy day, I mean, I'll run all the way down to Catherine's and fish, but I catch them everywhere on that lake. I love it. Yeah, Willow Beach is a place that I've never launched from. I, I, I probably need to do that at some point. I've always associated Willow Beach with the big striper fishing. Yeah, no, there's smallmouth up there, too. It's pretty incredible. Well, Tim, thanks for being with us today. Uh, we love hearing about that U.S. Open win. Uh, congratulations to you. I know it's been close in the past, and it was good to see you finally get over the top. And I'm sure you're going to do it again. I got a feeling that uh, I got a feeling that every time the U.S. Open happens, uh, we got to watch for your name up there in the top five at least. I yeah, appreciate that. I'll tell you what, I, it is funny. You know, the the first one bass pro am tournament I won. After I won that tournament, I was like. I'm going to, I'm going to win again. I could just feel it, you know? And it's funny because, you know, last year I won the FLW tournament out here and, and, uh, you know, it was a great feeling of a great accomplishment, but I didn't have that feeling like I did a long, many years ago. And then when I won the open this year, I got that feeling again. So it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to 2021 for sure. All right. Thanks for being with us today, Tim. A lot of fun talking to you, and we'll see you down the road. Yep, take care. Thank you. All right, thank you. Wardrobe for the Bass Tour Anglers podcast is provided by Koppel Outfitters. Go have an adventure. Visit them online at www.koppeloutfitters.com and on social media at Koppel Outfitters.